Wonderful. So I'm welcoming you to the wonderful year of kindness in the month of August. <laughs> I had to think what, what month we were in. And you know, Jewel says, the musician Jewel, she says, in the end, only kindness matters. <laughs> yes, that's so true. And uh, I wanted to just ask if um, all of you would be so kind to go ahead and mute. And what we're going to do is um, bring in Jan, who will set the wonderful tone and energy. I've been in Jan's beautiful uh, weekly meditations for years. She's amazing. We'll put the link in the chat for how to join them. They're completely free. And uh, but we want to introduce Jan to you. So Mary Beth, would you be so kind to introduce Jan? And then she will lead us off in our beautiful invocation for kindness. Jan Jorgensen is a visionary messenger with a focus on helping women step forward to lead through her weekly Be The Light meditations, voice release process, and Be The Light coaching program. A vibrational specialist, she reminds us it is our mission and joy to weave heaven to earth and by attuning our voices to the spirit of, through the divine feminine. Please welcome Jan of Sound and Life Healing Arts. Good morning, beautiful being. Good morning, beautiful. Jen, right before, if everybody would be so kind to mute themselves, that'd be great. Go for it, hon. Excellent. You know, this is a anchoring of a very high frequency here on the earth today. And I often use this geometric structure. And by your choosing to be here, you are holding a node of kindness. Kindness is a, a finger on the hand of love. And love is the answer for shifting and moving ourselves and all that is. And these aren't just words. This is a frequency, a movement. And so when I come and I feel and I see your beautiful faces, here, I, I feel it's such a blessing. So let's drop in together. Take a nice deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. We imagine that we are leaving all of our cares and our thoughts, and we are finding our node within this circle today of kind, compassionate leaders focusing and parking their consciousness on what is good. And we are moving this energy more powerfully into our hearts together today by our focus, our attention, our appreciation and our joyful presence. Blessed be, and back to you, Jill. Thank you, Jen, so much. Thank you. Always a blessing to have you. Will um, Mary Beth or Jan go ahead and post in the chat? A beautiful way to connect to you uh, ongoingly. And we invite you into this circle of kindness where my intention for each of you is to create conscious acts of kindness every single day and do it in business and do it in a way that keeps your business flowing and going to, to give and to receive. It is such a beautiful thing. And um, to that end, I just wanna say, who has practiced a conscious act of kindness today? Just raise your hand. If you've done it up to this moment today, go ahead, raise your hand. Take a look around. Take a look around. Beautiful. And it's not even 10 a.m. In, in the West Coast. Some of you like Rachel, it's already you know late in England, right? So I welcome you to um, be in that practice. Every day, I'm gonna tell you at the end of the day, if I haven't done it, I send a nice text, I send an email. I mean, it's 
easy to do, write a card. I have a policy now to write two handwritten notes every single week. Like, wow, to receive a handwritten note. Don't you love it? Right? So what is it that you can do in your business uh, that will be a conscious act of kindness and will take a next level of reach out from you to someone else? I also just have to celebrate something super great. And that is that the prophet of kindness has just been translated into Russian. So um, guess what? Woo -woo! <laughs> we have it now in India. It's with the biggest uh, publisher in India that publishes Brian Tracy and Deepak Chopra and now Jill Lublin's The Prophet of Kindness. Woo -woo. And so it's in India. Please tell your friends, anyone you know in India and in Russia. So as I figure this, we are spreading kindness around the world. And I thank you for joining us every week, uh, every, every month at least. And then every day I ask you, do what you need to do to presence it in your life so that our world becomes a better place and you are the leaders of that in your own space and with your clients and with your friends and in your community so that we keep kindness going. I like to think of you all as kindness keepers so that we think, kind, think kindly and keep kindness going consistently. So, so excited that you're here today. And I'd love to introduce a beautiful woman to you. Um, as you know, in every circle, we always have uh, multiple opportunities to come together. And, um, and we will do that always. And we always bring somebody who's an amazing thought leader in the world of kindness. And I love Shelly. Um, I actually got to meet her, well, virtually, <laughs> uh, through Wisdom 2.0. I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but it's a great conference. And if you haven't been there, go look it up. And I heard Shelly talk about the pandemic of love. And I loved when she said, you know, when the pandemic hit, I thought, I'm not going to do the regular pandemic. I'm going to create a pandemic of love. And so she has. And I'm going to let Mary Beth officially introduce her and welcome her today to help inspire all of you with a new kind of pandemic, the pandemic of love. Mary Beth, let's introduce Shelly officially. Certainly. Shelly Tegelski is the founder of Pandemic of Love, a global grassroots volunteer-led mutual aid committee that has directly matched over 1.5 million people since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic accounting for over $54 million in direct transactions. Her work was honored on CNN Heroes in December of 2020. Shelly is a trauma-informed mindfulness teacher, a community organizer, self-care activist, and an author with a forthcoming book, Sit Down to Rise Up, How Radical Self-Care Can Change the World, due out in the fall of 2021. Shelly was selected by the South Florida Business Journal in 2014 as one of their 40 under 40 honorees, and in 2015 as a most influential businesswoman in the region. In 2019, she was featured on the cover of Mindful Magazine and was also named by Mindful.org as one of the 10 powerful women of mindfulness. Shelly's work has been featured on CNN, Forbes, Upworthy, The Kelly Clarkson Show, and CBS This Morning, and she was re recently recognized by President Joe Biden as being one of the individuals that, it was, that is restoring the soul of America. And that just sounds amazing. So welcome, Shelley, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. So lovely to see all your faces uh, in the crowd here. And thank you, Jill, for the invitation. Really appreciate it greatly. So I am... Um, Really honored to be here and I wanted to share with you a little bit more about Pandemic of Love and sort of the impetus for how it happened. When you watch the stories about um, Pandemic of Love or you kind of see the soundbite editions, be it on CNN Heroes, the segment that they did, which was lovely, or even on the Kelly Clarkson show, um, they sort of paint this picture that I was just some random woman sitting in my South Florida kitchen um, and, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic and just decided to um, start a mutual aid organization uh, by, by throwing up two links to Google Forms, give help and get help in my community. 
And while that is a very nice story, it actually um, is not the whole story. There's a very, you know, that that makes it seem like it was just this sporadic moment in time. And the reality is, is that, you know, having spent 20 years in the corporate space, leaving in 2015 as the president of a mid-sized firm with 2,400 employees in 14 markets, I had a really rich background in growing and developing organizations, understood supply chain, understood how to build websites and dashboards and um, the, the value of raw data and looking at trends, et cetera. And when I left in 2015, I left for a very specific purpose, which was to pursue my um, my passion of teaching mindfulness. And um, I thought that I would teach mindfulness in the corporate space since that's where you know I um, thought I would have the most authentic voice. And in fact, I spent, I think only one week doing that and then really realized that that was not where um, the universe was calling me to be. Um, and, and so I wound up spending uh, most of my time and the way that I spent my time pre-pandemic was a third of my time is spent in uh, communities affected by ongoing gun violence and that are affected by mass shootings. Um, I teach trauma-informed mindfulness and I spend a lot of time training the trainers in those communities to essentially start to create, um, you know, a, a cadre of teachers who are also gun violence survivors that can um, be the best voice possible when speaking to other um, people that are in this club that nobody ever wants to be a part of, right? Um, from an authenticity uh, perspective. The second place where a third of my time went was working with social justice organizations, with political organizations, with activists who, especially after 2016, were um, really suffering from massive activism fatigue and burnout. And so I you know, spent a lot of time leaning on my training as a compassion-based resilience teacher and learning you know from from my teachers like you know Hugh Burns and Sharon Salzberg who has been my teacher for over 20 years and 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 working with even um you know organizations outside of the US like refugee aid workers um who were helping you know at the time um Syrian aid you know workers aid workers who were working with Syrian refugees etc and um working in in places like Gaza uh, and in Jordan and in Lesbos, Greece, et cetera. So the other third of my time was really spent with my own community in South Florida. I realized um, that I had um, a, a responsibility as my meditation community continued to grow and eventually grew from 12 people to 15,000 people who would gather on a weekly basis uh, on Sunday mornings to meditate together on the beach in Hollywood, Florida. Um, I basically realized that I had this responsibility to also um, use that platform to um, give people tangible tools to not just do the inner work, but to connect, connect the inner work to the outer world. Because I realized very early on that the pursuit of self-care, even though the word self is in there, is not individualistic. It's really a communal pursuit. And that in order for us to really be the best version of ourselves, we have to also help others be the best version of themselves so that we can create the best version of the world. So there's really that, you know, important connection between the journey of me, which is that inner work to the journey of we, which is community, like who's in your, you know, immediate um, circle of influence, if you will, whether at work or at home. And then the, the journey continues, has to continue, I think, to the journey of us, which is how we create movement. So that's just a little bit of context before I kind of just go into pandemic of love. Um, so I was sitting around my kitchen table uh, in March of 2020, like many people around the world, certainly in the US at the time, where it was inevitable that we were going to go into lockdown mode. New York was already in that mode, California, many states were already like ahead of that curve. And, and Florida finally 
um, decided to, um, you know, just have a, a statewide shutdown, government mandated, mandated shutdown. And having a community of about 15,000 individuals that were already very much transacting as a closed loop mutual aid organization, meaning um, there was always this exchange of wealth, a redistribution of wealth, wealth being broadly defined, right? Not just meaning money, but when you think about wealth, you could think about people who are suffering from time poverty or data poverty or food insecurity, et cetera. And so there's many different types of wealth when we kind of define it in that broad sense. And our community was already doing that and transacting um, always, uh, not just in times of crisis, like after a hurricane, but also, you know, just throughout the year, if somebody had lost their job or, um, you know, needed a ride somewhere or was really struggling with, with uh, mental health issues or, you know, was diagnosed with cancer, et cetera, our community would really come together in that sense. And so I wanted to really start to open it up as I felt despair, wanted to open up this mutual aid community to individuals outside of our, just our meditation community and extend it out to the South Florida community, but realizing that I had to also make sure that I protected um, people's privacy and also um, that I would have the ability to um, really still focus on creating the human connections. Um, most mutual aid organizations, if you have heard of like mutual aid in general, right? Mutual aid organizations, I didn't invent it. It has existed for thousands of years. Um, really since the dawn of time and formally was named mutual aid in, at the turn of the, in the, of the 18th century. Um, but basically it's just a community that um, creates a safety net. And for many of us, you know, when we think about our grandparents or our parents, they would tell us about this magical time period called back in the day. Back in the day when we were kids, we all knew our neighbors. And if so-and-so got sick, everybody knew and would rush over there with like chicken soup. And if so-and-so lost their job, you know, people made sure that they their kids had enough food to eat. And if somebody got sick or lost, you know, a parent, the community would rally around each other and really create this beautiful, intricate safety net. And that doesn't exist today. You know, while we're connected on a virtual level, uh, through technology more than ever, we really don't know our neighbors. We don't know what's going on in their lives at all. Like we may know, you know, that it's Joe and he works here and he does this and we chit chat with them. But do you really know if Joe is like suffering from mental illness? Do you know if, you know, how his kids are doing? Do they have, you know, uh, addiction issues? Like you have no idea. And I think that, uh, you know, I have this like longing to go back in the day to that time period to recreate that sentiment and recreate um, that fabric. Because I ultimately think that only we can save each other through kindness and most importantly, through proximity. Um, proximity meaning that we will be able to really connect each other, uh, to connect to each other and walk around in each other's shoes. So Pandemic of Love started around my kitchen table with two forms, give help, get help. I posted them on my social media site, really only thought that my community would be the ones looking at it. And pun intended, within 24 hours, it went viral. And I think we were able to prove that, um, that you know, that, that diseases are not the only thing that can go viral, but that hope and love and kindness can also go viral as well. And that when a lot of people come together to do small acts of kindness, the impact can be really huge. And so that being said, you know, the, the premise of Pandemic of Love, if you go to pandemicoflove.com, there are, uh, there's so much information. You could see a lot of our media segments, et cetera, to get more information. But the, the idea is simple. It, we connect a donor who identifies specifically what they are willing to give with an individual in need that needs that. And it requires a direct human connection. So we connect the two of them. They have to have a conversation and connect. And the stories of connection are so beautiful. They actually, you know, a lot of them have, um, you know, just moved me on a personal basis because they have transcended racial divides and generational divides and socioeconomic divides. 
And so within just, you know, at this point, a 16 month period, we've been able to match close to 2 million people across um, 280 chapters in 16 countries. And that accounts for close to $60 million in direct transactions, no fees, no overhead, no, no paid employees. It just proves that when it's built by the people for the people, um, and when we all sort of do a little bit, that we can really move mountains and create these this huge ripple effect of kindness. Um, so I encourage you to you know learn more about Pandemic of Love. If you need help, you can apply to get help. And if you um, are interested in connecting with somebody and giving help to somebody uh, in your local community, if there's a micro chapter in your community or in your state, then we can connect you in that way too. Um, but it's really just a beautiful way to, uh, at a time of disconnection, to um, create real bonds and human connection and to uh, start to create that proximity that hopefully will take us to a new zeitgeist of back in the day. Shelly, I, I love that. And I, I think we really should honor what she just said about how much she has raised and the power of that one-to-one -one connection. Um, I just I just think that is so such a beautiful thing. And can we just actually just give it up for Shelly? Give it up for Shelly and everything she's doing and the power of your inspiration and then putting it into action. She is an actual uh, representation of that kindness in action and took action to really make things happen. So we definitely encourage you to go to Pandemic of Love. It is listed in the chat for you. Please go make a difference for others. And if you need help, ask for it too. And thank you, Shelley, for providing that platform. It's just amazing what you did out of inspiration. And I know you are an inspiration. So thank you. thank you. And you know what? I know we ask you to um, come up with a question that yeah. we love to send our wonderful people into breakouts to ponder. Sure. And I'd love to hear your question. Yeah. So, you know, this, this actually comes out of a direct practice that I've been practicing for many years um, as somebody that is a reformed um, type A personality to-do list goal-oriented person. Um, I basically, you know, now really try very hard to center my life around intentions and not around goals. And so every morning when I wake up in the morning, I um, first things first, wake up, you know, and open my eyes. And I think to myself, if only for today, I was going to center my uh, day right? Every, every action I do, the most mundane tasks even, around one intention that was really going to serve me and serve the world today, what would that intention be? And what would that look like in my life, if only for today? So for example, if my intention today was kindness, right? Let's use that as an intention word. It could be anything. Then what would that look like as it pertained to my interactions with my mother, the seventh time she calls me in one day, you know, how, what would that look like? What would it look like as it pertained to me driving and being stuck in traffic? What would it look like when I'm standing in line at the supermarket and the woman in front of me has a price check and I have to wait an extra five minutes? How can I infuse this particular intention into my life? So it's really like a two-part prompt, right? If only for today, you were going to infuse one intention word that was really going to help create a radical shift in your life as it pertained to every activity in your daily routine of 24 hours, which intention would you choose? And what would it look like if you maybe pick one or two tasks, one or two things that take up a lot of your time during, how would you incorporate that into your day? Beautiful. Thank you for that. Mary Beth, we're going to turn on the chats when they go into their breakout rooms so that you can also uh, connect to each other. And we would love for you to answer this question. It is posted in the chat and we're going to give you 10 minutes to discuss it. You'll um, do me a favor, pick a timekeeper just so you know we stay on time. And usually there's about three or four per room. So figure a minute and a half a piece and then you can 
use the rest to just connect in whatever way you'd like. Okay, so we're going to breakout rooms. And uh, thank you, Shelly, for giving us the beautiful prompt. To do Have a good time, everyone. To our own, welcome back to our own little pandemic of love. <laughs> and um, I, I hope that you've all had some great sharings. I, I know Shelly's going to have to drop off soon before we, I would like to share too, but, um, and have you share is what I mean. Uh, but also, Mary Beth, I think you're posting in the chat all the ways to get a hold of her and just get connected. And we just really want to thank her again. Thank her again. Give her woo -woo, big, big high fives. Thank you, Shelly, again, yeah. for the great work that you're doing out in Thank the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you're doing and the kindness that you put in the world. And I look forward to connecting with you all. Um, I have a book coming out in October uh, that is available now for pre-order. And um, pre-orders are important, as Jill can tell you, for especially new authors. Um, but my book is very centered around mutual aid and connecting that inner work to the outer world. So. Thank you for your support and thanks for your friendship and kindness. I appreciate you. You got it. You got it, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Spreading the, the new pandemic, the pandemic of love. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. calling in. So who'd like to share some things that went on for you and your group? Who'd like to share? We'll take some shares. Raise your hand in the Hollywood Square. I see Rhonda or raise your hand in the chat, whatever works for you. And I see, oh, Rachel, you're just fixing your hair. Um, Mary Beth, you see anyone else? We're gonna spotlight Rhonda first. And who's next? We'll take a one on deck, please. Who'd like to share? Come on, don't be shy. This, you know me, you know us. We're your fam, new fam. Okay, Cheryl, I see Cheryl. All right, we'll take those two and then we're gonna go into our next circle. Rhonda, welcome Rhonda. Thank you, Jill, for doing this every single month. Um, last month I had to not be here and boy, it, it makes a difference. And so you help me uh, along with the community when we do the breakouts, uh, remind myself revisiting what I'm doing when I'm saying I'm in the heart center. And when I got to hear um, Shelly really talk about um, you know, the giving and, you know, and the expansiveness, it really opened me up. So I appreciate that in our group and our breakout. I, at, at some point I just was like holding my heart because it really sets us up for knowing that uh, there's so many people out there that need a lot of love. So being around this circle, it elevates um, our group when we come together and then it really elevates me. So we talked a lot about not allowing people to take advantage of us. You know, when we start really giving love to others, they know they're worth more. We realize how much we're worth in like every day and every minute that we are making these decisions. So that's that's really kind of what we were all talking about without getting into the specific details. Thank you, Joe. Oh, thank you. That's so beautiful. And I know all of you, because you're drawn here, you are doing good work in the world. So thank you for that in advance. Cheryl Moffitt, come on up. Yeah, yeah one thing Shelly said was only we can stay. Whoop, Cheryl, you went muted. Go ahead, say it again. Yeah, she said only we can save each other through kindness and proximity. And it's funny how I, I don't hear a lot of new ideas when I'm talking with people. But I hear lots of reminders like, oh, yeah, I know that. Like, I know that, but I'm not currently, maybe I'm not currently doing that. So I just always appreciate the gentle reminders everywhere you go, everywhere you look, there's gentle reminders. Yes. And uh, yes. And sometimes puts, uh, you know, what is it? Uh, claps on the head, right? <laughs> or uh, thunks on the head as, uh, as if you don't get it the first time. And yeah. Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me just add, and I think during the pandemic of COVID, we've learned that proximity doesn't have to mean your next door neighbor. It can mean the person across the world who needs you. So proximity has a different definition than it used to. Mm. Oh, that's powerful. Thank you. And especially on Zoom. I mean, I don't know about all you, but the biggest Corona bonus I found is the opportunity to meet people from all over the world 
everywhere we go. I just, it's been really a blessing. Um, so super on that. And uh, Phyllis has, uh, shall we say, volunteered Randy Pizer to share. So Randy, you'll be the last share and then we're gonna go into the next circle. Well, I'm actually happy to share. It was really lovely because we come from very diverse perspectives or religious orientations. And it was just really delightful to see the many different ways that we actually um, create unity. So for example, um, Melissa, Melissa, the motivator, uh, I was so moved by her. She prays with her five-year-old, holds her hand every single morning to set up their day and pray. And, you know, very faith-based. Um, some of us are more, I would say, mind, body, spirit oriented. We all, you know, discussed gratitude and uh, some of us shared our personal intentions. It was just a, a really, really beautiful opportunity for each of us to share our own perspectives. Oh, thank you for that, Randy. That is beautiful. And, you know, I'm going to just share with you that every day I speak five things I'm grateful for. And I do that with Steve. And, um, and every night we do it, you know, and I would tell you 80% of the time we're actually doing that five things we're grateful for. It's amazing. Even by the way, while I'm running to the shower, you know, trying to get ready for a day or whatever it is, right? Just speak it. I don't keep a journal. I don't make it complicated. I just speak it. And in the speaking of that, that's the power of the remembering of what we're grateful for and it sets a day for kindness and more of it to come in so I just I just really want to um, remind you to do that and to give gratitude and to keep giving conscious acts of kindness and one thing you know I, I haven't asked for a lot but I am going to ask for one thing and that is I'm doing a publicity challenge. It's new for me. I've never done a challenge. You all know me as a publicity expert, in addition to leading this kindness community. And I want to ask you, would you help me spread the word? It's, uh, it's like only a dollar to join. It's super affordable and it's going to be super fun. So do me a favor, if you would be so kind, we're going to post it in the chat. And I'm going to ask you if you would to please spread the word, post it on your social media, whatever way you can. I'd so appreciate it that. And I'm also going to ask you um, to make sure that you fill out the skill set, the wonderful document that we keep. Mary Beth posts that in the chat too. That's a link so that all of you can see who each other are and that you can connect to each other and use each other's skills and talents and say hi to each other offline. So we really love you to do that too. Okay. So Fill it in if you haven't filled it in, look at it if you haven't looked at it in a while. People are always joining the circle and we love to keep connected to each other and to help use each other's businesses in only the most positive ways and refer each other. So definitely take a look at it and fill it out and refer to it often. <laughs> All right, so we are going into the next circle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you 12 minutes to give and to receive to each other. What does that mean? You say who you are, the chat will be on, and that make sure to post your info in the chat right when you go in so that you can um, make sure to connect with each other, who's in that circle, right? And uh, you're gonna say who you are and what you do, and then let them know what's your best skill that you can give, like what you have to give, and then what would you like to receive? Super fun question. What do you have to give? And what would you like to receive? Just one thing of each, please. Um, well, you got a minute and a half a piece to do that. The person with the shortest hair, you're going first. And the person with the longest hair, will you please be the timer, timekeeper, minute and a half for each share. When the time's up, go ahead and say time, be verbal about it, because you know how it is. We're all so excited about what we do. We can get lost in the time. All right, everybody, we're sending you off to your circles. Have a beautiful, blessed time. Another beautiful, beautiful month of the kindness circle. And I, I want to, um, number one, remind you that our next kindness circle is September 15th. And we have a beautiful uh, speaker who's talking, Sandra Yancey, who runs one of the biggest women's organizations, talking about her journey about kindness 
And then we have Bob Berg, who wrote The Go-Giver. Uh, he's super exciting. That'll be in October, just a little preview. Uh, and I want to leave you with the wonderful quote I figured quite uh, wonderful for today, which is, kindness is love made visible. All right, everybody, thank you for being here. Keep practicing your conscious acts of kindness, and we'll see you again next month. Bye.